Hey guys, don't I look festive today? Well, I took a break from all the decorating I'm doing around the house and um, I want to take a minute and um, and wish you a merry that's right, a merry fracking Christmas. Yeah, those are drilling rigs. And uh, speaking of drilling rigs, I know there's some drilling rigs over in the UK and the North Sea. So I want to give a shout out to my sponsor of this episode, Lump Old Coal, not Lump of Coal, Lump Old Coal Chewing Gum. Uh, the official chewing gum of miserable places like Northumberland, Oak. UK, not OK, UK, Northumberland, UK. Shout out to y'all over there. So hey, while we're in the festive mode, did y'all get a Christmas card from me? You didn't? Well, guess what? A lot of people in the same boat as you, son. I might be fat and I might have a white beard, but I'm not stupid. Use your head. So what are we doing right now? Well, I'm gluing up this neck um, and you see how I pin this neck with the three pegs there, that triangle shape? No, it's not Illuminati confirmed. It's just a triangle and it keeps everything in shape. And um, I'll give you a link up there as to why I do that right up there where the eye is right about now. Uh, but I'm going up this neck and getting this license plate ready to go on this box because this is going over to Europe. That concludes this festive holiday celebration. Now I get a lot of emails from uh, subscribers and some of them are rabid like I don't want to say fangirling but I will say fan peopling or fan personing. So um, one of them really stands out and he said that he calls himself tension so tension i'm gonna give you some attention today just for you so mr tension said in the email i've been watching your videos and i've been watching the one about how you pin the neck like i was just talking about if you can remember that far back Remember, I just told you the eye up there. Yeah, it's up there, how to pin your neck. He also told me that he's been watching the episode about scarf jig, scarf joint jig. Remember that? Yeah, that's been a good one. I got a link right up there to it right now. But anyway, Mr. Tension told me that he's been watching this. And I said, I don't believe you, son. And he sent me a movie to prove that he's been watching this stuff. And he set up his shop. He showed me his shop and his setup. And believe you me, this is Coveter's uh, paradise stuff here. So, um, Mr. Tension, thank you for your uh, your email and your movie. And I'm going to put that movie at the end of this movie. And, uh, Mr. Tension, I'm glad I could give you some attention today. Now, let's... Let's do something, shall we? Hey, you remember this one? The Archcraft from the 30s? We've been working on it the last couple episodes. Um, the last one we did was called Curfing. How to make curfing? Right up there, right about now. Because we had a bad case. When I bought this thing, somebody had dropped it out of the case and it had that hole in it right there. Well, we've got a lot more work to do, but that curfing is right in there. We'll have a closer look at it. But I gotta seal up this hole with something and get everything stabilized so then we can fix the crack that's on the side here and then do the big project, which is the binding. See how the binding's bad there? So that's what we're up to today. We're gonna patch this hole and it's not gonna be pretty. Um, you'll always be able to tell it was patched so instead of trying to hide it and have people go what's that we're going to jump pile it up and people are going to go dude what's that 
So, let's hit the bench. All right, we're finally at the bench and matchbook of the episode. Fittingly, Cook's Worm Tablets. If you are new at this and you're wormy, you might want some of these. Cook's Worm Tablet. Now, I've said this a hundred times, I'll say it a hundred more. Always make sure that your workbench is set up for arch tops because they arch and they will fall off and they will crack and break. So, I got these towels. And I've got some bean bags, another one up on the neck where you can't see. I'm not going to go to great expense to get another shot in here and um, mess up this fine shot that we got going on here. But what we're after here is we've got to repair the binding on this and repair this slot. And that's what we were doing the last time. Remember, we put kerfing in here. There's an episode right up there again that eye that pops up there when you hover up there is going to be the one that matters to you because you can get the episodes done now we had a hole here like i said and that was from being dropped and you can see there's a crack that's running all the way down here starts over here and ends up where we mount the pit guard here but this has to be fixed now i do want to tell you that i have the guitar under tension the strings are on and it is strung up there's going to be times we want to do that there's going to be times we don't want to do that the reason we want this to happen now is when we're going to fix this hole right here everything is going to be as if the guitar were tuned up and tensioned up right because we're going to end up having a piece of metal over here that screws in what we don't want to do is make this repair and then string it up later and have screw holes and stuff that are going to cut loose. Next thing I want to tell you is temperature is a big deal. It's cold in the shop. You can hear a heater running in the background. I have my hide glue in hot water in this fancy cup right here. You're going to want to see this cup. Now, I'm going to pretend that I'm giving you some important information so I can get this really long shot with this cup in the shot but let's talk about temperature let's talk about the opposite of my shot being cold in the winter time let's talk about the trunk of your car let's talk about that fancy guitar that you have in its case the case you paid a lot of money for but you forget in the trunk it's almost 200 degrees the guitar is heating up the hide glue on the neck joint is heating up everything is heating up Somebody pulls the guitar out, offers to help you carry it in because they're one of your fangirls or whatever they are, and they drop the case. And that sudden jarring does what? Yeah, you open up to tune up your guitars because you're ready to play. You actually have the biggest crowd you've ever had, seven people all dying to hear you, and you open it up and your neck or your scarf joint on your neck is broken. Guess what? Gig over. Pay attention to temperature. Okay, I want you to think about what we're ultimately trying to do here. We are trying to replace the binding here. All of this is a precursor to the binding job. And that binding job, this is binding. I got it in a roll and it's a certain size and it fits right there. So while we're making these repairs, we want to make sure that everything is in place for the binding. The best way to do that is the binding that you're going to use on the guitar, cut a strip of it, put something on that you can hang on to, a screw. And remember, when you're cutting this, if you're using something mechanical like a pair of dikes or a saw, you're going to end up with little bits and pieces at the end. Those are going to cause rises and you don't want those because say for example where I put this screw in here to hold on to this. If that is sticking out, it will give me the idea that the binding is sticking out a tad further than it is. Once I go to start gluing this stuff on and putting it in place, any little ridge there, any little bump there, any bit of our repair here sticking out, is going to affect how the binding looks and a bad binding job makes the guitar look terrible so we're actually going to put something here and we need to remember that all the way through this repair we need to gauge this so have a piece of your binding smoothed out from where you cut it nothing sticking out so it's true to the height and width that you want like so 
Now you'll remember that this was jagged from where it fell out of the case and broke. We took a diamond wheel and cut it off to that shape. This is still a, a jagged here. We want to stabilize that under the repair. But the repair we're going to do is going to start right at this seam. Again, we're not going to make the repair all the way out to here. We're going to make it to the inside of that binding sample there. And it has to match the curve here. It has to go in enough to cover up this hole. And no matter what we do, it's not going to look the same. So in my world, we junk pile it, meaning it's obvious that it was fixed, but it's kind of cool. And so let's look at how I'm going to do this. First thing we want to do is make sure that our work area is clean and everything is clean. Once we start pulling this stuff off, the celluloid stuff, it's about as toxic as asbestos. So we're going to do something different there when it comes to working with that. But right now, we don't need pieces of dust and all this kind of stuff around. So we're going to rely on our friend. Been a while since we've had the guest appearance of the world's smallest blower. Get everything cleaned off. Let's start there. Next, you remember in the episode about curving, one more time up there. You can either use store-bought, make your own, or whatever you want to do. But, one of the options I showed you for making curving instead of cutting it on a bandsaw was to use veneer that you can get from a hardware store in different widths. And it is impregnated, easy, with adhesive on the back that's heat activated. So let me show you a little trick using this stuff even though we didn't use it to make curfing so on it. And cut a piece of this as long as this is. See that edge is up a little bit. I can put that in there like this. I can push that in like that. I can take my trusty pencil and I can just go like this. See that? And I can turn the pencil and come in from the bottom and draw a line that matches the curvature of the guitar body. Now what I want to do, last thing, is I want to hold this down like this. And remember, what goes in here, that's right, our binding. So if I cut this without taking into account the width of the binding, I'm going to be just a little bit too wide and then once this is all in place I'm going to be filing and grinding and trying to get rid of well that much of the repair while it's already affixed to the body so when I pull this out I've got the shape I need to stack the repair wood up here and see I've got the curve there that matches the outside once I cut this, then I can turn it over and make it match and meet this here and this here. And it will fit in just like so. Now, I'm going to be using a piece of metal for the repair. And we do that a lot. We use old metal from mines and thin things and tins and who knows what. i got a couple of things I can do here. I can either use this like so. I kind of like that. It looks like, boom, it blew up. It kind of matches what really happened to it. The only thing i got to worry about here is I've got to screw some holes here. And then when I use the metal, these edges can hang on stuff. Or I can use a piece of metal with one shape and kind of round it out like that. And that looks cool, too. Maybe not as junk piley as I like it, but... That's what I'm going to do. But in either case, you can see that there's a gap right down in here. See? It's more than the curving. If I start screwing down into that, it's going to create this odd spot right here. So I'm going to need to build this up. And I found a way to do that. Okay, remember my piece of veneer strip that I traced out here to match? Well... I cut them already. In fact, I cut a few. So here's the first one. Look, it fits right there. Um, and it almost fits 
it's hard to tell right now but it's taken into account that but only one of them that's not good you see how that slips under there like so but one doesn't do anything for me well one two three four of them stacked up gets me to where where I want to be and of course we got it we've got to put these all together we got to do a little bit of sanding but four of them matches right to there gives me a level surface and then I've got something to screw to again I'm going to keep telling you this all the way through this needs to be able to fit everywhere like so so we're going to have some work to do right there now you remember I told you that one side of this is smooth uh, wood and this again this is the veneer this is impregnated with an adhesive so what happens if I and that that adhesive is um, activated by heat kind of like hide glue so what happens if I stack four of these up and want to apply heat well guess what the bottom one is going to end up sticking to whatever I'm using so what you want to do is you want to think ahead and the bottom one you want the smooth part to be down where it's not sticky and the adhesive to be up while the other three the adhesive is pointing down so this involves some backwards cutting on the last one and you pile them up and the bottom one and the one next to it have adhesive pointing at each other and everything else is adhesive pointing the right way so I'm going to line these up I'm going to show you a cool way to attach these to each other all right y'all got a heat gun right push the button like a blow dryer right here and then you wait for that helicopter to go by and then you adjust the heat like this now how do we get heat guns well when we're using the blow dryer and the next morning somebody can't find it and they're calling you at work going hey yeah you get one of these they're fairly cheap and then you basically clamp these together and uh, let's get where you can see in the camera and see my logo and get brainwashed and actually covet my baseball caps but you basically clamp them together and use your heat gun and bond them all together because they have adhesive right no you don't want to do that that would be too easy you want to do this look at this puppy Ooh. do not covet my American heater company iron that plugs in patented 1904 to 1916 this is like way older than this guitar but anyway you plug this in you click it on oops you want to make sure this is safe and this heats up and then when you want to use it you just unplug it by doing this and pull this off and you can run around and do anything you want I don't know these things excuse me this deserves this these things are an example of something where our life was made much more difficult by <laughs> term used loosely modern technology so I'm gonna heat this up and we're gonna iron these things together to create exactly what we needed right there some of you are saying hey why didn't you just cut a piece of cigar box wood that would fit that exactly? I don't know. This is, it. give me a dislike and get, get out of here, please. Really? All right, there we go. All ironed up and stuck together. And we clamped it for a while up while it was cooling down because that adhesive will move if it's still hot. There we go. Now we're going to see what our handiwork did. And we've got a little bit of sand to do. We're going to do that on the belt sander, but we're going to get that where it fits just like so and lines up. And gives us enough room for that all right we're off the belt center and that's going to end up squeezing in a little bit there but we lay that in there look at that big test again i can't remind you enough about this is does that fit there oh a little bit right there i can just take this file 
and work this like this. But the most important thing is, is that that binding has room everywhere like so. There we go. I'm going to touch this a little bit more up off camera. But I want you to think about, had we just cut a piece of wood here and not replace this kerfing strip, we would have nothing to glue to or attach to right there. So we're going to take our hot um, hide glue and we are also going to take our heat gun since we got it out. I just thought I'd give you uh, what life looked like in 1921. And we're going to heat this up a little bit and make the temperatures match uh, with our hide glue in our body and then we're going to glue this on and let it set. Alright, while I'm here I want to make sure that that hide glue gets along the edge here. I want to stabilize where all these little fissures and cracks are and stuff. They're going to be covered up but that doesn't mean they won't stabilize if I don't do something about it. Now you can see that I'm letting this hide glue get down in those cracks and seams. I don't have to really worry about how fast I'm working here because as long as this stuff is warm, it doesn't start to set up. It's got great working time. Now, again, the bad part about this is if you're going to try and use this on necks and stuff uh, to glue neck boards together and heel boards, that's probably not the best application for it. But I like this. Again, I want to make sure that I'm not leaving lumps and everything up here because that's going to make my binding uneven later. But there we go. Now... I can just set this in here and I'm going to clamp that and leave it alone for a bit. Check it out. I'm not going to touch that because I don't want to get hide glue on the bottom, but that's going to be perfect. Oh, last thing I want to show you uh, on this part is... This is binding tape. It's different than painter's tape. Um, and I'm going to just put it here and here and pull it. It, it, it holds really well. I'm going to put a piece of it at each end here. And then I'm going to take the opportunity that I have, put it here like this, pull it this way, get everything in line. Now I'm going to use the opportunity that I have to make sure that there's hide glue. Remember the glue bot is good stuff. You squeeze it and it just comes up automatically right there and the tip doesn't clog. Anyway, I'm going to use this fine tip here. I also have this in the micro glue applicator that works really well. But as I'm doing this, I'm just going to make sure that there's nothing popping up there. And we'll let this dry nice and smooth like that. Okay, we are actually going to keep working while this is drying up. So I want to show you a little trick here. Remember, it's a really important that we know what that's going to be while we're cutting the replacement spot. So you see I've let the end of this tape go up. And I'm going to push it down into where that binding is going to sit and then do that. You see what I'm doing here? Pushing that down, making sure it reflects where the binding strip is going to be like so, then pushing it down because we are clamping, this is basically clamping the repair there. Once I've got that done, I can do the other couple I've got here like so. There we go. Remember, hide glue dries very slowly. There we go. We're going to need to know where that is. All right. While we're waiting for that to dry, I can take a piece of cardstock like so, and I can see where my ends are on the repair like this, see? And I can take this and say, okay, 
it's about that far up so I can make a mark there and then I got to kind of want to figure out I need a little bit of overlap so let's make that mark there and that mark there and I want the I want the the part that's fixed to be bigger than this so it covers this up and it doesn't ever expose this and it blends in nice so let's say I want to come up into here now I can basically take this and cut it out and use it to form a pattern and um, you know I might like something that's real like I'm known for like this hey I want to explode I want to make this look like it exploded right so I might cut it out to be like this or something like that the thing about this is I'm gonna to have to put a screw in everywhere one of those points is and it's going to kind of isolate things and I don't know that I want that this time I could age it use a piece of this old metal that I typically use yeah right there see that you like that then you probably really like that right Anyway, I could use a piece of old metal. I could put this on here and cut it out. And then once this is dry, I come in and drill my holes in. Sand the edges down so it doesn't poke anybody when they're playing. And, and, and then screw this part right into that kerfing. That's another reason why we use that kerfing and made it nice and deep. Or instead of this, I could use this and make it a more round thing. But you always want to remember regardless of what you're doing you've got to capture the spot where the binding goes okay so let me show you how to do that we've put the spot here like so and here and that catches it so when we come out we can take our pencil and go underneath here like this and follow this around and that's going to give us the radius we need right well once we start figuring out that we've done it here we also have to count again I keep telling you this over and over it's one of the places where you paint yourself into a corner to account for this the width of your binding so you don't want this out here and then be having to trim it like this or so so you're going to make sure that you're actually matching the radius here and not here seems like a big deal it is so when you turn this over and you're cutting here and doing whatever design you're going to do you want to make sure that you come in off of this line the width of this and cut inside that line so rather than use something like this i've decided to use this and wait till you see what I'm going to use. Something that reflects what was going on at the time. Hey, check that out. What do you think of that? That's pretty cool, huh? So, if I want to use this, i got to figure out what do I want to show up here. Well, I want the victor to show up. I don't want to cut the dog's head in half. Um, and I want a little bit of this speaker trumpet or whatever you called it so i'm going to want this to lay on here about like that that's going to make the repair come way up into here uh, but that's all right i want it to be cool so i've done this already with a sharpie come in laid everything out come in from underneath like this calculated all this and have drawn my line on the back i'm going to cut to the inside of that i'm going to sand this down and this will be ready to lay on here. Okay, I've cut this out. I've taken it to the belt sander. Make sure that nothing's going to cut me. Um, when you're working metal on a belt sander, if it's digging in, that's tell, telling you it's not smooth. And then you always want to take a hand file. You don't want to cut anybody, so make sure this is right here. So you just run this over like this. You don't want to make it so sharp that it, it's like a knife sharpen it like that. But you just do this. Now, I'm going to have to bump the camera again. But anyway, 
I'm going to have to put screws in this or something to hold it down. I don't want to depend on adhesive. So what I've done here, remember the snowflake trick that they taught you in school, you basically go around and trace this out and cut it. Then, I've done that already to save time. Let's get that white piece of paper out of there. Then I take these and I begin to fold this in half, in half again and in half again and instead of this being a snowflake not like that I'm not Ben Shapiro or somebody but I'm going to open this up like this and you see that fan shape serves as a template for everywhere I am going to put a hole so I'm going to figure out how far in off the edge. I don't want it to be way in off the edge where this can fold up like this. I don't want it to be so close that it breaks out. But I want to be about right there. And then I'm going to tape this template and pre-drill holes in my repair plate. I don't want to do that while this is... Uh, forming up and drying now. I don't want to do that. I want to have this all ready so I can lay it on top and just drill in and um, have the repair plate ready to go already. So when I lay this on here like this, I would turn this over and show you, but it, it's just too cool. I can't, I can't begin to tell you how cool this looks already. Okay, so there we go. We've used our template to make sure everything is going to line up. If I put my middle of my template in the middle of the repair, that's going to suck in a little bit. Everything can I can just sit on here and drill down now and put my holes in and fix my repair. Again, I'm keeping this covered because it's just that cool. You want to remember that when you're drilling down through metal, you're going to have some burrs coming up here and if you put those down without treating them this is going to want to pop up here and there so i've run this over the belt sander and again we're just going to take the file like so and make sure everything's okay it's easier if that isn't on there but oh well we've got most of it now the most important thing so we don't forget i have not removed the binding over here yet but everywhere there's binding this is going to sit there perfectly, and if you're looking at it from my angle, the binding is actually going to be trimmed off about that much with a razor knife once it's on. And this will sit, this edge will sit right behind the binding, like so. So I'm happy with that. I've got to prep the screws. I think you know what that's all about. Then we're waiting for glue to dry. Once that's done, I'll pull this tape off and show you what we've got. All right, our hide glue is dried up. We'll take all that off. We've already drilled our holes. And we're going to take one of these sanding pads. I think I've told you about these before. They come in a set. They go all, all the way up to really fine, like 3,000. Give you a link below in the resources area. We're just going to run so we're like sure. So make sure that there's nothing sticking up in lumps and then We'll have one more thing to do, and that involves these. See you in a bit. All right, guys. I am very happy with the way this turned out. I mean, look at that. Chick flick teal screws, the whole deal. It doesn't get any better than that. Now, the next episode, we're going to be fixing that crack right there. And we're either going to have to buy a tool that luthiers use or make one or several. And we're going to use them to repair that crack. Now, when we do that, we're going to take the tension off the strings and we're going to change our approach a little bit. But this right here was really important to making 
the fix is that this guitar needs to be functional and to stabilize into the future. So, I'll put this over here. I want, you to want to remind you, do not forget about our unofficial sponsor that doesn't even know they're our sponsor, Lump O'Cole Chewing Gum. Lump O'Cole Chewing Gum. And, last but not least, do not forget to give my friend Tension some attention and watch for his clip after you figure out how to contact me and I will see you next time. Hot Sauce Guitar Kitchen sending you some love because you and Del Puckett have helped me raise my game and I just wanted to send you a couple of uh, things I learned from your channel. <clears throat> I'm getting ready to glue this up. <clears throat> I learned this from you. Although I reversed it a little bit. Got my little jigs I made last night. For uh, down here. Right now I'm working with some purple heart. I got cheap. So anyways, I just finished drilling this. Like for the first time I've built maybe 50 boxes. Uh, maybe 60 or 70, but it's not that many. But this is my first time using this technique. And I'm loving it so far. And you inspired me to, to do, because I'm doing this, I decided to go ahead and, and use these as the as the dots in the front and the side here. So that's fun. <coughs> and then one more thing I wanted to show you. Um, my name is Brian <coughs> Davenport. I'm calling myself Tension. Tension is my art name. Um, and I built the jig. So, um, yeah, man. And I bought my very first um, chop saw. Look. So I bought my first chop saw. Get that scarf joint. The scarf joint is actually why I uh, contacted your channel, why I looked you up. Because I tried cutting that purple heart by hand and it kept coming out wonky and this expensive wood and I was like so mad so I went on YouTube found you and then I found um, Del Puckett <coughs> who I'm a major fan of now too so you two are my uh, mentors now so I've been doing this since about 2009 I got um, the handmade music factory by Mike Orr I'm sure you know about it. That that book right there is what started the whole the whole thing. It's a whole story about that, about how poverty is your friend. And went to the library, broke, and found that book. Literally just found it. So, anyways, um, Hot Sauce Guitar Kitchen. I'm at Instagram. I don't have websites or YouTubes and all that stuff. I'm just building right now. I've got a couple of boxes back here. Um. I've worked on a couple of uh, three string three stringer bass, and kind of my thing that I'm doing a lot is using uh, swag hooks here to kind of let the guitar sit. And I'm also installing cut off hot sauce bottles, mounting them on the neck to um, to be my slides. So you can un you can unscrew it up top there. Behind that is a is a uh, 150th anniversary of the of the Transcontinental Railroad because we all know the railroad imagery. So there's a stamp back there, a real stamp, and um, <coughs> I've just begun fretting. So this one, this guitar right here, will be my sixth attempt at fretting, and I need to get with you at some point to find out the power. Because here's my fretting kit, you know, CB Giddy. Um. This one right here, I fretted, but I gotta I gotta go back through here and um, get those frets leveled out. So I might have to rewatch your channel here about um, getting a fret press because I can see that fretting is kind of like an aggro. It's kind of not that much fun, but anyways, I just want to send you some love, some respect, and a big fat thank you um, just for this idea right here. I'm just gonna kind of play with that idea, so. Um, Hot Sauce Guitar Kitchen, Brian Davenport, 
artist unknown as Tension. Um, peace out, Columbus, Ohio. Later, man. Thank you so much.